Hello. So I'm here today on Full Circle Network, the new channel that I'm excited about putting up a lot of, just sharing a lot of stuff with you guys. Um, and today I want to talk about how I process the world around me. Now, we have a lot coming at us these days. There's a lot going on. Uh, if you just really allowed yourself to take everything in and believe it all, you'd be so confused and so inundated in the process that that alone would drive you crazy. And so since this channel is really about healing, healing mind, body, and spirit, and that's something that is not unfamiliar to, to probably most of us, but it seems like it's an ever-changing conversation about how that healing um, can happen, considering that there's so much changing daily. You know, you have, you find out about new processes, new chemicals, um, just new industry, the way things are being done differently. Oh, this medicine we thought was okay, now it's not, you know, et cetera. You find that things pass the FDA that later you, they find out, whoops, this wasn't the best idea, and now people are sick and dying. So that information is ever-changing, which means we have to stay ever-vigilant and always mindful of the information that's coming in. But you don't want that to drive you crazy. And you still have to have this, um, and I believe this, what I try to do is still have a very positive outlook no matter what's going on around me. And admittedly, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but it really is the healthiest thing to do, is really just to maintain an attitude that uh, you're going to be okay, and I'm going to figure this out. And But in order to be really effective, you have to rely on yourself. Now, certainly all the information is coming in, and that's okay, that's great, but you have to learn to process this information yourself. And this is what I've been doing for, truthfully, ever since I can remember. Um, I mean, I can go back as far as like first and second grade, literally. And I can remember systems and processes that just didn't make sense to me. And when you'd ask those in charge, you'd get an answer that just wasn't sufficient. It just did not still make sense. And even though you knew those were the adults or the teachers, whatever, it just never made sense to me. And, um, and I had a hard time going along with things that just didn't make sense. And, uh, you know, I tried, I honestly tried because, you know, you just got in too much trouble. It was too much flack. But then you get to this place that you say, look, it's got to make sense to me. I, you know, it has to feel right to me. Um, I don't really care about the flack at this point, you know, I really need to understand what I'm doing and what I'm agreeing to. And um, so for the longest time, and I know we're, there's a lot going on around and probably a lot of my listeners now, you guys have heard about awakening. People are awakening. Um, you know, people woke up last week. They woke up two years ago. They woke up 10 years ago. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's no right or wrong to the process of awakening. What I think is the fact that you, if you woke up yesterday, so-called so -called woke up, meaning you became more aware that things that you may be have believed before don't suit you now, that your current belief system is open for change. That's generally what people mean by waking up. Some of the things that they've believed and um, operated out of don't seem authentic to them any longer. They don't seem true. And so, um, and as they look into it, there's more and more around them that confirms that. So that's kind of like the idea of awakening, if you've heard it and you're not quite sure what people mean by it. At the same time, um, I can remember so far back to me questioning so many things that I don't really think in terms of awakening. Uh, and there are a lot of people out there like me too, who just can remember all the way back um, to, you know, when they first became conscious of, I guess, of thinking about stuff, that things just didn't seem right to them. And so there's a group like myself out there 
that you don't feel like you are awakening. You feel like you've kind of always sort of been questioning a lot of stuff. And we're okay too. We fit in as well. I mean, it's no right or wrong here. But I wanted to say that because I know that when I first started hearing the term awakening, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm awakening, you know, and uh, because I identified with a lot of the messages. But as I kept on going down that path and thought more and more about it, I just kept on going so far back to the, my earliest thoughts and thought, I don't really think uh, just awakening. It's like I've always had these questions. And so if you're like that, then, you know, join the club because that's okay too, you know, but it's good to acknowledge it because if you can remember those early times where you were questioning things, where you had a hard time going along with stuff, where um, your health and well-being didn't seem to line up with what people said it should line up with, then the things that you did then, the way you process information then, the way you remembered stuff then is applicable now. So go back into those memory banks, think about those things and begin using those strategies. Go back and revisit those strategies. We all have different strategies. There is not one strategy. And anyone who tells you there's one way to do this thing or five ways to do this thing or buy my book or buy my tapes, I guarantee you it's going to work is not being truthful. Now, their system may work for certain people who resonate and vibrate at the in energy of the, the work that they're putting out there. But it's not necessarily true that everybody will benefit that same way. So I really want to emphasize that whatever I'm sharing with you has worked for me. Um, or I've in talking to others, I've discovered that it works for them. You know, it seems to be a consensus, but it's not a law. It's not a rule. It's not the only way. And I like to say that because I'm a big believer and we're all here to help each other. We're all sharing to help each other. There's just no this one way of doing this thing. I'm really actually against that kind of philosophy or that kind of mentality of um, here, sign up for what I'm doing. I'll be able to help you. I'm the only one. <laughs> you know. You really have to resonate with energy. Go with the energy thing. If it feels right to you, go with it. If it doesn't feel right to you, you know, bow out gracefully. Say thank you, but no. Okay. So the way I process things are I have a tendency to really rely heavily on my right brain. I'm very heavily right brain oriented. And, um, but I'm probably pretty balanced because I'm really left brain as well. I can be very analytical, very critical, very um, plan oriented very goal driven. Um, so I, you know, I have to know how things work and the whys of everything. That's a lot of left brain. At the same time, I'm very much comfortable in my right brain. I'm very much comfortable in being spontaneous, going along with the flow, not knowing what's going to happen next, but being excited about it. Um, you know, on one hand, I want, I can control things. On the other hand, I can let them go. It's just, it just depends on, I guess, where I am at that point and what I'm trying to accomplish. So most of my ideas, um, the way I process information around me comes through my right brain. And it really downloads as an intuition or an instinct. And I use the word download, and I mean that from the standpoint, it comes down whole. It just goes, you know, just plop. The same way, you know, when you download a document, it just goes, doo -doo 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 -doo, bam, done, you know. Um, so what happens is I normally get the whole idea, everything downloads, and then I begin to start processing the information in the left brain. And then I'll kind of go back and forth between what it feels like in the right brain, which is your creative, your instinctive side. And as I said, left brain analytical and sort of plan driven. But I get it as a whole. And it's interesting because I believe that all ideas come as a whole piece, intuitively or instinctively. That comes through our heart space. I'm a big proponent of 
what I've coined as heart intelligence. I've been doing creativity coaching since the early 90s and uh, working with artists, working with non-artists, working with business people. I've Over the course of my career, I've started a number of companies. I've sold them. I have, um, you know, if I get an idea that I want to try something new, I just try it and I build it up. So um, this is a process I've used for a very long time to act, you know, actuate um, and materialize various projects. However, they always come in as a whole. I get the whole thing, the whole idea. And that comes through your heart. That's it, what I call heart intelligence. It's that part of you that you just know that you know that this is right. It feels good. But you need to now take it apart a bit and figure out and put a plan to it. It doesn't first come to the mind. If anything is first coming to the mind for me, I feel like it's staged. I feel like it's maybe something that someone else is doing or has done. And then it's not a problem because there's no need to reinvent the wheel either. But you want to go through that and just kind of dissect it a bit and see, is this really where I'm trying to go? Or am I um, trying to do something a little differently? Am I trying to think outside the box or what have you? So once I get the whole thing as a whole um, and it comes through there, you know, our heart has a center. It has a mind. It actually has a mind. It actually has the ability to transmit consciousness, to, to receive and transmit consciousness. Because consciousness is a state that exists outside of the body, outside of the brain. So there's a lot of ways that you can perceive consciousness. Through your heart, for us as human beings, is a huge way that the universe speaks to us. That the creator, the creative source, the God source, the um, what, however you want to refer to that energy, that's how it communicates with us, not through the brain. It does it through our heart. And you're probably hearing more and more conversation about heart, heart space. Um, there's a lot of um, technology out there regarding the heart and receiving information through the heart, what have you. This is just the way I've done it, and this is just the way I've taught it. Um, is the idea of receiving it in this way. And if you think back to when we were younger, you pretty much knew intuitively what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Even as a kid, I mean, you know, we um, have my notes up here, so I wasn't using them any timed out. So I keep on reaching. It's because I'm trying to get my little notes. But anyway, um, you know, when you were outside playing with your friends and uh, you went to do, you were getting ready to do something and something hit you like, well, you know, I don't think I should do this. I might get in trouble for this. But you say, ah, you're going to do it anyhow. I didn't get in trouble like this before. So, and sure enough, your parents find out about it. You get in trouble and you think, I knew that I was going to get in trouble for that. That was heart intelligence. That was consciousness communicating with you. It wasn't analytical because you could say to yourself, well, I've never done this before. I've never gotten in trouble for this before. Uh, my parents never told me not to do this. Something like it, but it wasn't this exact thing. So that's how the left brain works. It wants to process and be very analytical and very specific. But the right brain, the heart space said, hmm, this doesn't seem right. And this is kind of like what you got in trouble with before and it's similar but you know we just get that whole feeling that whole instinct and oftentimes you don't analyze it so what happens is that over time you start capitulating you start just saying oh, probably gonna this is probably not a good idea to do uh, probably shouldn't try that and you stop yourself so because most of us were you know studious and um, obedient kids coming up. You know, we did our little stuff, but mostly we wanted to please our parents and our teachers. We wanted to get along, we wanted to make friends. And so we did, we were taught that the way that that was going to be most successful for us was to go along. 
Just do the thing. Don't ask a lot of questions. Make it happen. And so in doing that, we really taught ourselves not to rely on those instincts as much because um, this may not work. I might get in trouble for that. I shouldn't try this. Nobody's done it before. All this kind of stuff. So by the time I know I was in my teens, I had just pretty much said, fine, let me just go along with the process. Even though I questioned every single solitary thing. And most people thought that I was a rebel or something like that. But I was never like rebellious. Like I did a lot of crazy things and, you know, um, you know, right. I just had this mental picture of like running off on a motorcycle, doing drugs, you know, hippie thug type or something like that. I mean, I never did anything like that, but I just did question a lot of things. So, and what we're also taught is we get along because it seems to work for other people. All the people who did what they were supposed to do in school, went to college, got an education, came out, got a good job, have a nice house, a nice car, you know, start your family. It, it all seemed to be working for people. So we said, well, you know, I know myself, I just, well, just go along, Robin, because really truthfully, um, you know, you're going to be better off. And so I did until I got into my twenties, my early twenties. And I realized that, um, what, what it started feeling like, and I'm, I'm going to put my glasses on because I want to read some of my notes here. You know, where I think we are right now is that I really believe we're in the 11th hour. Um, time has run out and, you know, we've tried a lot of things. We've tried a lot of modalities, meditation, massage, you know, vacations, everything. Um, and we still, it just still doesn't seem right. Um, and that's what happened with me in my twenties. I was just like, at this point I had been diagnosed on, it had three separate operations for, um, fibrous breast. Um, every time it was, was it malignant, it wasn't malignant, it was never malignant, but you know, they couldn't tell me anything to stop it except for wait for them to grow again and come back in another operation. I guess that was like their solution. So, um, I started reading up on it. I read, I just started reading up on fibrous, you know, cystic breasts. And it said, you know, you shouldn't be eating this. You shouldn't do that. Da, da, da. So I just started doing that stuff after three operations from the time I was 16 and basically just, you know, be mutilated is what it comes down to. Um, uh, it just didn't make sense, but, um, to find out that I healed myself, <laughs> I actually healed myself of this thing. My body stopped producing them. So that was a real aha moment for me. I thought, wait a minute, let me go back to relying on my instincts because this other thing doesn't seem to be working. So that was a real turning point for me. And so, you know, I feel like we're all right now at this point where it feels like we're, you know, sitting in the audience watching the scene from the Wizard of Oz when the large curtains open and they're being pulled back to expose the wizard. And you know how this whole thing is happening in ultra slow motion, you know, so that every lie, every paradigm, every belief system, everything that we once hung our hat on is now uprooted and shown to be otherwise. Um, and, you know, it's like grace that's happening in very slow motion so that we have the opportunity to try to start saving ourselves, to try to start getting control of our lives, our minds, our thoughts, our feelings. And to generate, probably for the first time in our lives, an authentic experience. And to speak to our truth. And, and even if it's a deep gasp of dismay, you know, that the wonderful, beautiful, magical, mystical Oz was run by this little tiny old man. This mean little character behind the curtain. Yeah, that's kind of like what I feel we're dealing with right now. Like Oz is being exposed. And so let's take advantage of this moment of grace that things are slowing down. I was talking to one of my friends the other day. Um, 
she's just awesome, awesome woman. I'll have her on the show. She's a clan mother. She's just really, just a really beautiful spirit. But she was talking about this thing of grace where things have slowed down, you know, like the massive pole shift that generally in, in you know, in his, historically, um, tens of thousands of years ago, just flipped just like that. But now it seems like it's happening more slowly to give us an opportunity to pull it together. Um, it seems like we're, things are being exposed and people are able to look at them and say, oh, wow, okay, let me change that. Let me not eat this. Let me try that. This is better for me. Um, so it's just, we're in a really beautiful period, actually. And as much as it's going on and as much as negativity and fear porn that's being thrown our ways, actually, we really should embrace we're in really beautiful times. And if you look at it like that, wow, you are really going to be able to resurrect yourself like the phoenix out of the ashes because you'll be able to take yourself to a whole unbelievable level of healing and health and well-being. And that's healing the mind so that the mind can help heal the body and the spirit. I mean, these things, the mind is so is is so much in control of things. We've got to get the mind healed so that we can reconnect with our spirit, so we can usher our spirit back in, so we can find our spirit and acknowledge our spirit person and reconnect and reunite with it so that both together can heal the body. Because the last place that any thing manifests in is in the physical body. Everything starts in the etheric. And it takes a while for it to become physical. So that's the good part of it. So what is heart intelligence? Heart intelligence is very simply as it sounds. It's the physical or organ of the heart that also happens to be a space in which consciousness can be um, detected. And intelligence is just that, you know, the, the securing and the collecting of information. When it's connected with the heart, that collecting of information comes from an infinite source, an infinite well, I like to think of, um, an infinite place where all of it is and all of us can tap into it. You don't have to pay someone else to do this for you. We can all tap into it when you just allow your heart to open up and you allow those little impulses, those little instincts that you get, start acting on them. And the more you act on them, the more they're going to grow. Um, and the more mileage you're going to get out of it. So one of the things that um, I like to say is that um, intuition is the new knowledge. For so long, we have been conditioned into believing that it has to be in the book. It has to be learned. It's got to be hard. Somebody has to teach you. It's a system. It's a, um, a set of standards. Um, it requires a degree. You know, I have a degree in law. I have a degree as a doctor. I have a degree as an engineer. I have a degree as this. It took all of this degree work for me to be able to know what I know, but you don't know it. I mean, are we familiar with that? <laughs> that paradigm. Um, and even people who say it doesn't matter to them, it's amazing to me when they pull that hat out of their back pocket when they want to try to impress you or try to control your thinking. All of a sudden now they're the expert on this or expert on that. And generally I find that they're self-imposed or self-proclaimed experts. I mean, who really cares? Because at the end of the day, we all can source this information. You just have to go back to your heart. It's all there. And some of the other information you don't need to know. Maybe you don't need to, you know, know how to build a rocket. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Maybe because that's not what you're trying to do. So... Consciousness is very kind. It gives us what we need to know. When we ask for something, we get it. If you don't ask for it, you don't need it. It's real simple. It's, it's like not that difficult. So, yes, um, intuition is the new knowledge. And it's this German philosopher by the name of uh, Schopenhauer. He was from 17... Hundreds, you know, to, through the mid 1800s, and he stated that intuition is the one unit of true knowledge. The other is the idea. 
Now, Schopenhauer was kind of a um, very um, controversial philosopher um, in a lot of ways. He had some sort of some philosophy philosophies that were sort of like anti-religious, you know. And because you know Christianity really wanted to control the thinking of the day, his stuff was like anti-Semitic almost, or not anti-Semitic, but anti-atheist. Um, Atheistic is what I meant to say. Um, he definitely, not to my knowledge, was against Jews or anything. So let's retract that. It wasn't anti-Semitic, but he wasn't. It, they wouldn't say he had atheistic thinking and all this sort of stuff. But I believe he was more of a. Um, I think they wanted to say he was a, a um, an atheist with regards to biology, like the way he felt the world was running or operated. So anyway. But he really put a lot of good stuff out there on this. And the one thing was intu intuition is the one unit of true knowledge, the other is the idea. So he felt intuition and the idea were the true units of true knowledge. Not stuff in a book. Not stuff over, not to say that there's not true knowledge in a book. But we all get intuition, we all get ideas. And that's what it's really about. So, um, I say that heart intelligence is the flow of intuitive awareness, understanding, and inner guidance we experience when the mind and emotions are brought into coherent alignment with the heart. I mean, you know, basically, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Um, so I wanted to... Um, I can go on and on on this, but I really don't want the videos to be too long. Um, some of the interviews will definitely go longer, but just kind of want to put, just start putting out pieces and we'll just keep on building upon them because from this point, now that we've talked about intuition, instincts and knowledge, right brain, left brain, I want to get into next time I'll talk more about what your right brain, left brain and what, how that shows up in this process of intuition, intuition and instincts. So um, right now I don't have a regular timetable. I'll be putting videos up regularly though. And um, at some point I'll probably actually come up with a format, but see that's the right brain part of me, but <laughs> doesn't feel like I have a need to necessarily say it's gonna be this day, this day, this day for this and all that. That kind of stuff really bugs me anyhow. I'm, um, I have another channel up it's under Robin McClendon, M-C-C-L-E-N-D-O-N, Robin with a Y, R-O-B-Y-N. I'm an artist, and I do a lot of, um, beside the creativity coaching, I teach workshops and a lot of mixed media art techniques. I love art. Art speaks to me. Art is healing for me. And I use a lot of these techniques even when I'm working with non-artists because they're fabulous for opening up the right brain. It's incredible. I just did a workshop this past weekend. And um, the participants were amazed themselves at what they walked away with, that they found out about themselves that they didn't know. And this was an older group of um, professionals. And there were things that they didn't even realize about themselves. But as soon as we did the process, they could see it was right there. They could say, yeah, that's me, but I would have never put it together like that. So... On that channel, I do a lot of art techniques and put my paintings and my art up and all the stuff that really turns me on. But this channel, because I'm such, I'm so passionate about healing and about um, healing the body, the mind, the spirit, and doing it through the right hemisphere, doing it through um, health and healing practices, what we eat, what we drink, you know, um, all those kind of things. And I just think that there's so much on right now about the wars and this and that and terror and that. And, and not that any of that is not legitimate. It is. You know, I haven't gone down every rabbit hole. I can't say yay to this and nay to that. That's not what I'm about. But really, I am about helping for us to heal. That's my passion. And so to whatever extent I can help and be a part of the healing process and the peace on this planet, that's what I signed up for. And this is what this channel is about. So I'll have lots of more, lots of more, 
sounds like that samori <laughs> i guess it's sort of the same right lots of more uh, amore no amore was with love well lots of love right <laughs> anyway um yeah i'll have a whole lot more coming at you and um I have some wonderful guests on. I'm excited about that. And so anyhow, please um, subscribe to the channel so that you can keep updated with my latest videos. Um, and come back and uh, visit with me. Also comment if you have any questions, any topics that you'd like for me to talk about, please put it in the comment section because I would love, 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 love to be able to direct my topics and my guest topics to the things that interest um, you guys out there, the things that are current right now, the things that, you know, make our hearts beat. So, alrighty. But lots of love, much peace, much joy and happiness. Um, and start working on a little bit of that heart intelligence. Play with it a little bit. See what you come up with. It'll, you'll be surprised at how um, gracious consciousness is. And uh, till next time, this is Robin McClendon from Circle Healing Network, and we're doing this healing with heart intelligence. Love.